Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Monday and we are just under five weeks out from the Ben Wider National Show. I am getting very excited, but I feel like this week things are going to start getting a little bit real and a little hard. As you know, if you watched my other Prep Files videos leading up into this point, calories have been pretty high, which means energy has been really good. The last two weekends, we made some adjustments where on Saturday we went to like no carbs. My total carbs for that day were 55 and all the carbs came from veggies or protein or fats. And then on Sunday, same thing for the day, except at nighttime, my last meal was oats or cream of rice, and that's to give me some carb energy for my really hard Monday morning glute workout. So that was pretty good. I think I adjusted well to that just because I knew that Monday was coming and I'd have another high day, so I'd get back to normal, so to speak. So, um, but this week we're making some changes. So this morning I weighed in at 137, which is my prep low, but I'm still about four or five pounds away from stage weight. And so we're making some changes to calories and food this week. On my three leg days, which are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm gonna keep calories high at 1550, which is amazing. And then on the other days, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm gonna go to that low carb day. So I'll go to about 1300 calories and about 75 carbs. And all of those carbs will come from my last meal of the day in way of a bowl of oats or cream of rice to prepare me for my leg day workout the following morning. So. I'm excited for that. I know my body responds really well to low carb in terms of like weight, but unfortunately I also know like it impacts my energy, it impacts my mood, all kinds of things. So, so we'll see how everything goes from that. I expect to hopefully drop another couple pounds by the three week out mark. So let's hope that that happens. But as usual this week, I will take you through all the things, diet, food, prep stuff, workouts, check-ins, and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned and thank you so much for following along.
I just got back from the gym. I had a really tough hamstring and upper glute workout today. And typically I've been coming home and eating right away. And I usually have um, something high carb like oats. But what I've been doing maybe the last like three or four workouts on lower body days is coming home and having some simple carbs. So simple carbs process really quickly and that glycogen can go straight to my muscles to start repairing and recovery. So what I've been eating is white rice. So I made some white rice in the Instapot the other day. So I have some leftover, I'm just gonna heat up. Today we'll have about 175 grams of rice. And I think this is working really well for me that I think my body is recovering well. I think that I, at least I feel like it's going to my muscle storage. And the only downfall with this that I've recognized is that because simple carbs process so quickly, I am actually more hungry, like a lot sooner than I would have been if and when I eat oats. But I am in it to win it. And so this is sort of like I don't want to say an experiment that Anna and I are trying because it's been proven in the bodybuilding world and the fitness world that eating simple carbs right after our workout is advantageous, but it is something new for my body that we're trying and my body has been responding really well to the calories that we're at, which are still kind of high. I'm at 1550 still on leg days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and my body's just really responding well to that. So we're five weeks out and this is something that I think we're going to keep going and trying until my carbs, you know, get lower and lower and lower because then there will not be a lot of room for white rice. So I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to show you guys like what I do to kind of spice it up. So while the rice is being warmed up in the microwave, I am actually going to put together some PB fit, which I will then mix into the rice, which I know probably sounds really weird and or gross, but if you're a competitor, you get creative because you have to. So I wanted to spice up some white rice with a little bit of protein, something that is still plant-based because I think normally people would mix egg whites in it, but this will add some flavor, a little bit of punch. And I actually haven't tried it yet. I normally put protein powder in here. So this will be the first time I'm trying PB Fit, but I have a good feeling about it. Okay, so I'm gonna do 20 grams of PB Fit. Mix this with a little bit of water. What I like about PB Fit is that, well, I think it tastes good. I think it has good flavor and you can make it as like thick or watery as you want. So it could be put on like a rice cake or a piece of bread if you're eating bread, or it could be a little bit creamier to like spread easily on top of something else like rice that will be easy to mix in. So I'm actually gonna make this a little bit more watery today. So I don't know, like I said, this is kind of an experiment to see if it will mix better throughout the rice. Okay, so that is done. My rice is done heating up and I'm just gonna pour this in here. And then before I mix it together, I'm actually gonna add some stevia. This is just like powdered stevia from Trader Joe's to sweeten it up a little bit. And then of course, I am going to put cinnamon in here. Cinnamon is the best. I eat so much cinnamon and I know I talk about this in my other videos and sometimes I think I'm gonna get cinnamon poisoning because I eat so much cinnamon, but it's really good for like inflammation and other things. And then I'm gonna stir this all together. The thing about this meal is that it's like very high carb. I think it's like 62 carbs or something. I'll put the macros up, but it is ultimately like not that much, you know? So it's high carb, a lot of calories, and it doesn't fill me up that much. But again, I'm doing whatever it takes for the greater good of my muscle building. So I'm gonna add in 50 grams of banana. This is also adding some carbs, so that 62 or whatever this meal is. But I'll just add in some thin slices of banana. This will actually help fill me up a little bit more. Although I do think bananas are simple carbs, but I feel like whenever I add banana to oats or cream of rice, it's like pretty filling for me. Well, not filling, you know, but like I can tell it has some substance. Okay, then I'll mix that all together, although the bananas really won't mix very well. It's very thick, so when or if I do this again with PB Fit, like I do with my protein powder, I'll probably make it a little bit more watery, but let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good. 
It's actually very good. I think it can use a little bit more cinnamon, but I think this is a go-to. I like BB Fit because it's just a little bit less chalky or powdery than a protein powder. It tastes a little bit more natural. Anyway, this is my snack or my lunch or whatever you want to call it, my second meal of the day. My next meal will probably be, well, less carbs because I don't have that many carbs to work with during the day, but something a little more high in protein and fat just to kind of hold me over for a little while. But this is good. I recommend 10 out of 10. Just about to start practicing some posing. I just got back from the gym and I'm a couple meals in and some coffee and water. So ideally I like to practice posing fasted, but to be honest, like posing does not fall like high up on my priority list, even though it should. So getting it in whenever I can has become just my norm. And posing is not my favorite thing to do. And every show that I've done, my posing has improved and I've never gotten feedback that like my posing needs to be better. But I know like if I want to do well, if I want to separate myself from the competition at an, on a national level, especially on a pro level, like I need to nail my posing, not just the routine, but being able to like nail each pose and transition that's gonna highlight my strengths and hide my weaknesses as best as possible. So I've been trying to pose for like 15 minutes every day now, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on my energy or how much time I have available in the day. And I think it helps. I think more than anything, like I spend so much time working from home and at the gym that like I don't wear heels as often as I used to. So just because of that, like just getting practice wearing heels is probably the biggest benefit that I'm gaining so far. And also like the stamina of posing, like holding my twists, making sure that I have the stamina to like suck my stomach in for an extended period of time on stage, especially while they're doing comparisons. So I really try to go slow and methodical and run through the routine like 20 times at least. So I'm gonna do some posing now. I'm gonna take some video of it so I can analyze it later. I don't take video of my posing like every day, but maybe like half the time or a little bit more than half the time I take video just to see like where I need to improve and where my weaknesses are. So I'm gonna do that now and send over to Anna so she can also give me some feedback. So I set my tripod like kind of lower so I can get the similar angle to where the judges will be looking. And I don't have the best lighting in my house so I just have like this stretch between my dining room and my kitchen where I have some room to pose that's on hardwood floor. So it's not the best lighting. So I don't really take this for like check-ins or to like look at my definition, conditioning, all that stuff. Those are done in semi better lighting, but not even great still um, in my gym, in my house. So this is just really for routine for the technique of posing and to evaluate myself in that sense. So the things I think about when I'm posing are, number one is to stick my glutes out, like sit into the pose as much as I can and in my back pose, like, you know, arch my back as much as I can without bending over to give my glutes like that fullness and round look as round as possible because that's my weakness. And then I also think about like standing up straight. So like shoulders back, but like natural looking. Um, and I think about not moving too much. If you see my routine, like I try to make it very fluid, like less frills, if that makes sense, because I wanna just like hit my front pose really well, transition easily, quickly, hit my back pose really well, again, transition quickly and easily, and then in my front pose again. And I've studied the sport for so many years, as if you compete, you probably have as well, but 
Uh, Sandy says all the time, like the less time you're on the stage, the less likely we are to find your flaws. And I watched a YouTube on her recently. I think it was on Team Elite Physique's YouTube page, but she was doing a seminar or talking at a seminar. And she basically said like, when you're on stage, she's not thinking about like, okay, like how does her, how do her shoulders look? How do her ratios look? How do her glute tie-ins look? She's thinking about like, okay, what are the flaws? Does she have the proportions? You know, are they right? And like looking at the negatives. And so I thought that was really interesting perspective to even like convince me more that just like hitting my front and back poses and the best I can are the most critical and then getting off the stage. So that's why like my routine is pretty short. Also, I feel like at these shows lately, I guess maybe not even just lately, I think maybe at most of the shows I've done, there are so many girls and literally I almost always run out of time doing my full routine, even at like a faster pace without a lot of frills. They're already calling the next girl on the stage because like they have to keep things moving. So I feel like just hitting that and nailing it and getting off is like the best way. Win-win for everybody. Anyway, so I'm gonna continue posing a little bit more and then have some lunch and I'll talk to you guys later. Just got out of the shower and it's 6.15 and I'm starving, only to realize that I don't have any of the food I'm gonna have for dinner prepped yet. So I need to start from scratch. And I mentioned in my last week video that I love making potatoes and having that as my carb. I feel like you can get a lot more volume than rice or like quinoa in potatoes and they are good in potassium and like other vitamins and minerals. There are a lot of things that you can do with potatoes. I am going to air fry them tonight. So that's what I'm gonna show you. But really you can like boil these and make a really healthy mashed potato with like salt, pepper, a little bit of almond milk, a little bit of Greek yogurt or non-dairy yogurt. Um, and it's really good and it's very healthy. You can like cut them up as French fries or you can just do a number of different things with them. But I literally just cut them into small pieces. I tend to like small pieces. I think just because it goes a little bit farther, it, it gives the illusion that it does. And also because they cook faster. Have you guys seen The Ultimatum on Netflix? Anna turned me on to that show. She watched it on a flight home from vacation. And she's like, it's great to watch. I would watch it during cardio. And I've been watching it during my hour cardio sessions and I'm literally obsessed. It makes cardio go by so much faster. The great thing about potatoes is like you can season them so many ways, like with whatever you want. And they're good with sauces. So if like you're a sauce person, ketchup, mustard, like barbecue, whatever, they're good to dip in. So I feel like just, just more versatile than rice. And to be honest, like I like rice, but I've just never really been a big rice fan. Like it's never been my go-to. Same thing with like pasta. I'm not like a real big pasta fan. I don't know, maybe it's the way I grew up. My favorite food. It's french fries, so I guess I'm just naturally drawn to potatoes. I also like salty foods, so I love like a salty potato, hence the french fry. I think there's like a school of thought that you should soak the potatoes in water for a while in order to get the starch out. Sometimes I do that if I have time, but I don't really get the point. They don't taste any different to me. They don't cook any different. So I'm not sure the value of like letting them soak to get the starch out. But if you know why that's advantageous, leave it in the comments. So this is my last potato, which that went fairly fast to cut them, but still have to cook them. And in my air fryer, they probably take 45 minutes. This is the problem with not having them done and I'm hungry, so like, during that 45 minutes, I'm gonna to wanna to snack on something. I'm not going to, but I'm gonna to want to. So that's why I like cooking a whole big batch so you can just pull from it like for four nights of the week and it's gonna be amazing. And the reason I cook for 45 minutes is because I just like them extra cooked and extra crunchy. So if you don't, then you could probably cook a lot quicker. 
Okay, so my air fryer is heated and I'm just gonna toss one layer of potatoes in here. So I put one little layer in here and they spray it with oil, with avocado spray. And then I use everything but the bagel seasoning, which I love, I literally use this on like everything. And then a layer of salt. And I salt pretty heavily, I am like into salt. I love salt, I love salty food and I sweat a lot so I feel like it's good for me. It definitely helps replenish me. And I don't ever or rarely eat processed food so like the salt I put on my food is really the only salt I get. So I'll mix that around and then spray it with another layer and then mix that around. Now they're ready to cook. As my potatoes continue to cook, I decided to chew some gum to stop me from munching on food that I shouldn't be eating. And I'm gonna cook my fish. So I mentioned in my last video that I cook a lot of mahi and tilapia and I just get the frozen bags from Costco. They come in these little pre-packaged like individual fillets. And so I just took five of them out to defrost and I'm gonna cook them all together in a pan. That way I can have enough for my five ounces tonight and then hopefully some more for the next couple nights, dinners and lunches if I need it. Also with my mahi, I'm gonna make canned green beans and I have, may have mentioned this before as well. Like I love green beans and I actually really love these canned green beans so it makes it super easy and convenient to cook as well. Usually when I heat up my fish, like my leftovers, I'll throw half a can or a full can of this in there as well and heat it all up together along with the potatoes so it makes it really, really easy, but these I love. They're just fresh cut green beans with sea salt, but I'll drain them and then like rinse them too to get some of that sodium content out of them. And then I'll end up salting them myself, but it's just my preference. And you can season these however you like. I actually always use this black garlic from Trader Joe's. I love it, it tastes good. It's not super strong, but I love like the coating or the texture that it has on the fish. And then I just top it with pink salt. Finally, dinner is done. It's 7.15, so that took all about an hour. I am starving. I don't like sauces very much, but you can easily top this with like sugar-free barbecue sauce or lemon pepper sauce or teriyaki or something. I love to just dip it in mustard. So I'm just gonna put a side of mustard on here and some salt and then I am ready to eat.
It is Saturday and I am getting ready to go golfing with my husband. Not because I love it, but because I love him and I compromise in a marriage. But it is about a five hour round where we play and we walk it. So I actually love it for active recovery days because I burn like a thousand calories and get in like 12,000 steps. But I'm just preparing a protein shake to take with me because it is a five hour round. Like I shouldn't be eating a meal during that time. So I will take a protein shake to kind of get me through. I also bring like an iced coffee to help fill me up a little bit and to give me some energy. It's enough to kind of get me through dinner. And I'm so focused on the game that it's like, I don't tend to get too hungry, but I just want to make sure like I'm keeping consistent calories in and enough protein. And one of the things I want to mention that's like sort of different this prep than all my other preps is I used to be really super rigid about not eating at restaurants or if I'm going out to a restaurant, bringing my own Tupperware of food. And this time I'm really just trying to embrace like a more easygoing structure. So we're going to dinner right after there's like a really nice restaurant at the golf course that we love to eat at, beautiful ocean views. Our friends are meeting us and instead of bringing my own food and like carrying it in my golf bag or leaving it in the car and then grabbing it, I'm I looked at the menu ahead of time. So I know there are like some healthy options for me to get. And I've already added those in my macros for the day. So I can eat out and like feel a sense of freedom without having to manage like cooking my food beforehand and bringing it with me and like dealing with all that. So just like one thing I'm trying to embrace this time so I can feel like I'm living a normal life or like at least a good balance, which I hate that word. Um, but a good balance between prep and like normal life. Just wanted to share that with you guys. So talk to you later. Just got back from the gym. I had a really great lower body workout, a glute workout. I feel like my energy has dipped a lot lately, but today I took some pre-workout. I was just like ready to hit it harder today. So very proud of myself. And now I am starving and I am having my post-workout meal, which is rice. Last time I showed having rice with PB Fit, which has been great, but I felt like that was keeping me still really hungry afterwards. And so I have since like just started pairing it with some fish. And if I have some fats, like a little bit of avocado, and that has been keeping me fuller for longer. And I think it's a good thing that like my metabolism is obviously responding well to the meal since I'm hungry. So I think that's the, a good thing about it, but also like I hate being so hungry, especially as my calories are getting lower. I want to feel fuller for longer. So I'm having 200 grams of rice today, which the majority of my carbs for the day are right now post-workout and then also my last meal of the day I will have some oats or I think cream of rice one, one or the other in order to help fuel me for tomorrow's workout which is upper body shoulders and also my low carb day so I'm going to hopefully carry some of the energy for my carbs uh, tonight in my last meal over to my workout tomorrow so I'm having 200 grams of rice and four and a half ounces of mahi and I have my pan heating now and I'm literally just gonna throw it all in there together and make like a make like a little hash like a little mix again like I don't like to microwave my food very often for whatever reason I just feel like when I reheat it in a frying pan with just like a little bit of spray oil I don't know it just feels like the texture is better and it feels more like a better home cooked meal than when I heat it up in the microwave. So while that is heating up, I'm gonna cut some onions. Of course, you guys know me, I love some scallions. And I feel like what kind of makes this meal good is like just topping it with some onions. And then because I'm still four weeks out right now, I will put like a little bit of ponzu sauce. I love ponzu although it has sugar in it. So I just use it like very, like a teaspoon of it to give it some taste and just some salt and pepper. And then that's typically it. Besides my energy taking a dip a little bit, I've been feeling a little like cranky. And I thought that was because just low calories and a change in my diet. And so my body is just adjusting to that. But 
it occurred to me this morning that I also think I'm starting to feel a little anxiety about the show subconsciously. And I feel like maybe a little bit of that anxiety is causing some like stress, some crankiness in me. And I guess that's pretty normal, but I think a little bit of stress is always to be expected going into a show because you work so hard for it. But I think there's a little bit extra stress for me this time and that it's a national show. Uh, it's an all natural show. And I don't really like know what that looks like or know what the competition looks like. And I don't know any of the judges. I don't even know who the judges are. And it's like in a city I've never been to on the East Coast. And so there's just a lot of unknowns and a lot of variables. That paired with the fact that like, I want my pro card so badly and I've been working so hard for it. I think just, you know, makes me feel like a lot of different feelings, but I like that I acknowledge it and I put it on the table. I think then that way I can sort of like work through some of these things in my head and hopefully like pump myself up, you know, but ultimately I'm doing everything I can. So I just have to tell myself like there's nothing more I can physically do to prepare myself to show up my best. And then it will be out of my hands, right? And I think that no matter what, I will be proud of myself. But of course, I really, really, really want that pro card. And I really just want to bring a package to stage that's undeniable. And I remind myself that I did really well at the Tahoe show, despite being a natural competitor up against some competitors who are maybe not natural. So... I tell myself that in my head, like if I can be competitive there, then I can be competitive at a natural show. But the national stage is just a different level of competition. Um, I've only done one and it was last year and the level of competitors that show up is pretty top notch. And so you just, you never know. Okay, so my food is ready and I just like mash up the fish in the pan and mix it in with the rice and just like that a little bit better. And then top it with some onions. It's just really good for some flavor. I actually cut too many onions, but that's okay. And even though this seems like a full plate of food and 200 grams of rice may seem like a lot, and it typically is, um, still, it's just not enough. I'm so hungry. Like my metabolism is firing on all cylinders. So I'm starving. Um, I love ponzu sauce. Like I love a tart, like citrusy flavor so I prefer ponzu over like a soy sauce or coconut aminos but I just do like a quick drizzle for flavor and then I'm actually gonna top it with some everything but the bagel seasoning and actually I forgot one thing I forgot that I also like to top it of course with these chopped onions that gives it like a little bit of a crunch and a little bit of a flavor so that's it. I'm going to eat. I'm starving and I'll talk to you guys later.